a Cyclone MPU board with apparently a U10 PIA failure. And the way the board behaves is the dot blanking LED will blink for some period of time, and that's when the message is on the display. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blinks of the diagnostic LED. And that is an indication of the U10 PIA failure, sure enough. U10 is a 6821 that's on the CPU side of the data processing system and signals are sent to it, which then it conveys to U9, another 6821, which control, or, and the signals that it conveys are the sound select signals. And then U9 has some other functions in here also. But let's take this one out, test it on my Neo Lock tester and see what we get. When your desoldering equipment is really tuned up and you've got a clean tip in there and it's sucking like it should and it's set to the right temperature and there's enough solder on the back of the part, on the on the solder side of the part, uh, to disperse the heat properly, a part should come out just like this. Now, this is the first time I've removed this part. If I get my fingers on it, it just falls right out of the socket. So here we have that part in my Neolock tester. My dog is not happy with somebody outside right now, but you can see that this PIA has definitely failed. Back on the bench with this Cyclone MPU, and I have cleanly removed U10, installed a socket and replaced it with a new 6821. I have installed a 6264 NV RAM, and this board originally came with a 6116, so when you use a 6264, you have to move jumper W5 to jumper W6. I've replaced two 10 microfarad caps in the sound section here, and three 100 microfarad caps in the power input, 22 microfarad cap in the reset section, the ROMs were all good. I bench tested the TIP 102s and the lamp matrix transistors and the special solenoids transistors. So I'm expecting this test to go rather well. I have set the game to free play and I do have one of my sound boards configured for Cyclone. The lamp matrix is dancing as our... French friend Leon Boré used to say, and the only solenoid on right now is the AC select relay. The diagnostic and blanking LEDs are 100% correct. And you get to hear the sweet, sweet sounds of Cyclone. <laughs> Something about that sound test and the upcoming speech test, it just makes me laugh every single time I hear it. That crazy uh, dummy dunk target in the center of the play field. He's always going, hey, you, with the face. We'll let these conclude, and that's good. Hey, you, hurry, hurry, step right up. That's working properly. Lamp matrix, all lamps tested can work through the single lamp test and that is working properly. The next test is solenoid test or coil test. The orange LED is simulating the AC select relay. Actually, it's tied to solenoid 12, which is the AC select relay. 
And now we're going down the column of non-multiplexed LEDs. You'll note that it skipped 13 and 14. Cyclone does not drive 13 and 14 from this test. Here are the special solenoids being driven from switch inputs. This is the flipper enable relay circuit. And we can do switch edges. And Cyclone uses all 64, or at least reports all 64 switches in the switch matrix. So that was going across the diagonal of the rows and the columns. Of course, the wheel test is not going to work since we're not in a Cyclone. I have gone through these audits and adjustments and set the game to free play. So if I proceed again through there, you can see it reboots and we're back on free play. Thank you so much for sending this board. Pretty clean board. In fact, a very clean board. I don't remember seeing any damage over here in the special solenoid section when I had it out. So the only ICs that have been replaced on this board are the two that I did right now and the cap capacitors, oh, and the power input header. So I'm gonna wash the back of this and get all the solder flux off the back of it. And turn this crazy music off.